Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, it's Miss Quids again, and I'm back with another LaTeX tutorial. A couple of videos ago, someone commented asking if I would do a tutorial on TICTS, which is a package for doing vector graphics in LaTeX. So I've decided to do this one now, seeing as it follows on nicely from my previous video, which was on including graphics. I believe it is pronounced TICTS as opposed to TICTS, I did a little bit of an investigation and it seems that it was developed and is maintained by Germans and as such it is pronounced TICTS. Apparently a couple of sources say so, so that's the pronunciation that I'm going to go with. Because it is a package, in order to do any kind of drawing we need to import the package into our LaTeX file. So now we've imported the package TICTS. The way that we create vector graphics using this package in LaTeX is by using an environment. So we need to declare an environment and we do all the drawing within that environment. So the environment is called TICTS picture. So this is an environment much like the document environment we've actually got here as well, so everything to do with ticks is done in this environment. So you can obviously have multiple kind of iterations of this within the same document and they will be different pictures. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the concept of lines. So lines are drawn with the draw command. <laughs> so we do backslash draw. The first point that we need to give draw is the point all the coordinates that we wish to start drawing from, so it will effectively move to that coordinate. So if you start at 2 comma 1 or x equals 2, y equals 1, we're effectively starting from slightly to the, to the right and, and upwards. Where we wish to move to is the next thing that we specify. So if, for example, I wanted to go from 2, 1 and I wanted to go in towards the right, that would be 3, 1. And how do we connect these together? With a line, which is specified by dash dash. This is just a simple line going from 2, 1 to 3, 1, and we end the command using the semicolon. And now let's have a look at what this actually produces. So this just produces a line going from left to right. If I wanted to extend this line, and go upwards, for example, we could do, let's see, upwards. So that's going from three, one, two, three, two. So we've gone from here to here upwards. Now, what if within the same picture, we wanted to do a line that was completely separate of this? Well, we can start off with a separate draw command. What this will do is aside from the kind of backwards L that we've just drawn, we start a new line at 3, 3, which will be above from where we've just finished drawing, and it will go to 4, 3, so it will be to the right. Let's see what this looks like. And so yes, we've got here to here to here, next command here to here. And this is very basically how you work with lines in ticks. How about if we want to draw a circle? I have created the ticks picture environment again. And so the way that we draw a circle is again with the draw command. So first we say draw, that we want to draw a circle and then there are associated parameters with that. So let's say we want to start drawing at zero, zero. Then we say circle. And then within the square brackets, we can give some commands. So the easiest thing that we can give it is the radius. And I should say that if you omit a unit, the default unit is centimetres. So now we've got a rather large circle with a radius of three centimetres or a diameter of six. So it's quite a large circle in comparison to the other components that we've already got. So now we have a basic circle. How can we instead make this an oval? Well, rather than just having a single radius, we can instead have an X and a Y radius. So if our x radius is three, so it's three units wide, and then y radius is four, which means it's four units high. So now you can see that it is taller than it is as wide. 
We can also move this oval such that it is tilted in a specific direction. And we do this with the rotate command. So if I ask to rotate it by 100 degrees, then it effectively ends up looking a bit like this. I will now show the command for how to draw a basic arc. So I've specified an arc which has a radius of 8 millimetres and it has a particular start angle and end angle and these determine basically because this is effectively part of a circle it specifies where the kind of opening of the circle is if that makes sense. Might make more sense when we have a chance to run it and look at what the output is. And it would be helpful if instead I, instead of using a regular bracket, I used a square bracket here. So here we have an arc that looks a bit like this. Now at the moment our drawing looks quite boring really, it's all just black lines on a white background. So how do we add a bit of colour? Well we can just use some colour words effectively. So if we want our arc to be red, we can just do draw equals red in square brackets. And this gives us a red arc. We can also do a dashed line by just doing dashed as a keyword and this gives us a nice dashed oval. We can also specify the thickness of the line like so and it ends up looking like this. Finally an easy thing to do with colours is to fill in the shape. We can just specify a fill colour. And here it is. So this has been a basic tutorial on how to do a few different things using the ticks package for vector graphics, including lines, circles, ovals, and also doing a little bit with colours and different types of lines. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all later.